Hello everyone, it's Jen from Old Tinkerer Studio. Welcome to the next Let's Animate Blender 2.8 tutorial. In this tutorial, we will be animating dice. So let's tab into edit mode. And then subdivide the cube, which will be our die, into a 5x5 five five grid. You can do this simply by hitting your W key click on subdivide and then change the number of cuts to four make sure that you have the die selected go into face mode and on the top we will select the center face for one front we'll select two The right, three. On the back, five. On the left, four. And then on the bottom, six. Now what we need to do is inset each of the selected faces. So click on I twice to make sure that you are insetting the faces individually. And then inset the faces. I'm in setting mine approximately 0 0.06. Then we need to extrude each of the selected faces back towards the center. Hit Alt E, extrude faces along normals, and then extrude them back in towards the center. And I extruded mine at an offset of 0 0.046. Now go ahead and select the entire die and add a bevel with Control B. Just round the corners out a little bit. And I added a bevel of 0 0.069. Now let's go ahead and change over to the Cycles Render Engine. Go into your Materials tab and then change the default material to a de your desired color. I'm going to use the hex code of 699FE7. Then if you go into rendered, you'll see that this is applied to the entire die. Now what we want to do is just select the actual inner inset faces. So just shift select all of these inner faces. Once you have them selected, hold down your control key and use the plus button on your numpad to select the rest of the faces. You'll see how it selected all these faces surrounding that interface. Then add a material that we're going to assign to these. 
different faces. And I'm using the hex code of 424242. And assign it to the faces. Again, if you go into rendered mode, take a look at your die, make sure that you have it the way you want it. And select the entire die, and we're going to scale it down to 75%. So just hit S.75. Tab back into object mode. Then duplicate the die, shift D, and then just move this duplicated die slightly above and to the side of the original die. Just make sure that they're not touching. Now we're going to go ahead and make the floor and the ramp. So add a plane. And this will be our floor. So make sure that you have it placed underneath the dice a fair distance because this is what the dice will be animating and dropping onto. Then scale the floor by 25 to make it nice and large. Hit S and 25. And add a material to the floor. And I'm going to be using the hex code of 5A974B. Go into rendered mode. You can see it's a nice green. Now we're going to add a plane, which will be our ramp, which the dice will hit and then fall onto the floor. Add a plane. Move it behind the dice. Then rotate the ramp around the x-axis by 45 degrees. R, X, 45. Then scale the ramp along the z-axis by 2, and scale along the x-axis by 5. Now since the ramp is not going to be in the shot, we don't have to add a material to it. Make sure that you have the ramp selected, and then go to your Physics tab. Click on Rigid Body and change the type to passive and select your floor again click on rigid body and change the type to passive we need the ramp and the floor to be passive objects so that they'll stay in place and allow the dice to roll then individually select each die Click on Rigid Body and leave the type at Active. We need the dice to be active objects so they'll move and interact with the passive objects. Now go ahead and move your dice above the ramp. and make sure that they're not touching each other or the ramp. Zoom out a little bit and click on your play button. Now mine seem to be rolling fine, but if they're rolling like off the back of the ramp or they're not rolling as much as you want, make the necessary adjustments. And this could include rescaling the ramp or changing its angle. Or here's a tip. 
go ahead and take the dice and move them further up. That means they will hit the ramp harder and they will roll further and longer. I'm going to go back to the very beginning. And I'm going to select each die individually, hit R twice to rotate around the normals for each of the die, just to give them a little bit of a twist before they start moving. Then play the animation again. Once you're pleased with the way the dice are rolling, we're going to finish off the animation. And on your keyboard to open up the properties panel. And then under camera lock, click lock camera to view. And then hit N and close the panel. And go into camera mode with zero on your keyboard. Once you're in camera mode, you want to adjust the camera to the view that you want. Now here's a tip. You want to make sure that the ramp is actually not showing in your camera view. And if you find the end frame for your animation, which mine's around 104, adjust the camera so that you have both dice in the actual camera view. You can do this simply by just holding down shift and using your middle mouse button to pan. You can use your middle mouse button to scroll in and out. And if you need to, you can grab objects like my ramp is just a little too close and it's going to be in shot. So I'm just going to grab it and move it up just ever so slightly. As you make adjustments, make sure that you are replaying the animation to make sure everything looks fine. Once you have everything set up, you have the shot that you want, go under your World tab and click on Ambient Occlusion. This will just give the entire scene an illumination. That way you don't have to play around with lights if you don't want to. Now make sure that you take note of when your end frame is for your animation. And go to your output tab and change the frame end to the end of your animation. I'm going to give it a couple of extra frames, so I'm going to change mine to 110. Then under the output section, change your file format to AVI JPEG, and this will output an AVI file for you. Then to actually render your animation, you go under the Render drop-down menu and choose Render Animation. I would make sure that you save your file first, just to make sure in case Blender crashes. I hope you found this useful. If you follow along with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, please tweet me your creations or any creations you make in Blender. The link is in the description. If you have any questions or suggestions for tutorials, please leave a comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe.